In the last lecture, we perform ARP spoofing man in the middle attack. We uh, we were in the middle of the connection between the uh, the window, Windows host machine and the gateway router, uh, so that uh, we were able to uh, have the packets uh, that is being transmitted between the Windows 10 machine and the default gateway passes through our Kali Linux uh, attacking machine uh, interface. So, uh, but we didn't do anything to the packet. The packet simply passed through our uh, our interface. We didn't do anything to it. Now, in this lecture, we are actually going to snip the packet. We are going to uh, see the packet, capture the packet, and then see the uh, what uh, the packet contains, what that particular victim machine is trying to do, uh, what uh, what site uh, it access, and um, perhaps if, even if it enter username and password, we will be able to capture the username and password, and then see the login credentials that he used to access a particular website, and then we can go to that website ourselves and try to log in into that particular website. All right. So for the purpose of this lecture, uh, and you should also know that this uh, lecture, uh, this uh. Uh, will be uh, uh, the packet that we are going to snip the packet will only make meaning to us if uh the protocol use uh in uh used by that packet is an unsecured uh protocol protocol like http is an unsecured protocol now if uh if the victim access a website that is using http like this website is using http then we know that whatsoever uh the packet is going to, the content of the packet is going to be transmitted in plain text without any encryption whatsoever then we will be able to see the username and the password and almost everything that the data that he exchanged via those packet will be able to see it in our packet uh, sniffer uh, but if it is HTTPS, that is uh, HTTP over TLS, then uh, we know that it uses uh, TLS encryption to encrypt. Uh, it uses a uh, TLS uh, protocol, uh, which uses a an, a particular encryption algorithm to actually encrypt the data that is residing in that particular packet. Then we, we won't be able to see the content of that packet. But if it is an unsecured protocol, like I said earlier, like HTTPS or FTP, which uh which transmit uh content in plain text, then we will be able to intercept the packet, see the content of the packet. So uh, that is why for the purpose of this lecture, I decided to uh, browse into this HTTP website. Then we are going to log in uh, username and password, and then we'll capture the packet and then see what the packet contains. All right. So I'll, I'll come back to the Kali Linux uh, machine here, and then I'm going to run the same command that we ran earlier to carry out the ARP spoofing attack. I'll also come over here, assess the commands, and then I'm going to run the commands simultaneously. Okay, you can remember my password. I'm going to enter my password. So uh, we can see the RP spoofing has started. So I'm also here and then hit enter, enter my password. So also here we can see that the RP spoofing has started. So now we are basically in the middle of the uh, connection between the Windows 10 machine and the gateway router. So now I'm going to go to the Windows 10 machine and then we have this HTTP website and then it has a login form where we can enter username and password. So I'll click on here and then enter you. All right. And then so and then uh, for us to be able to capture the packet, actually, we have to make use of a particular application, a tool called a packet sniffer, also called a protocol analyzer and one popular instance of this uh, packet sniffer and protocol analyzer is wireshark so here in this uh, car linux we have wireshark so i'm going to capture uh, i'm going to launch the wireshark and then i'm going to capture the packet that is being transmitted between these machines and then we are going to see what the packet contains so i'll just come to the menu here and then i'll launch wireshark so i'll just uh, type wireshark so this is wireshark i'll click on it and I'm going to launch the Wireshark. So require authentication. I'm going to enter my password. So now the Wireshark will launch. And then we are going to start capturing packet that is being transmitted through our interface since we are now man in the middle. All right. So my Wireshark has launched. And we can see that the uh, we can see all the interface uh, network uh, interface card that we have connected on that particular machine. And it is currently ETH0 is currently highlighted. That means that the packet capture is going to be using ETH0. But if we have any other interface, 
that is connected to the network that is same network that we uh, have both the attacking machine and the victim machines connected to then we will make sure that we uh, use that to perform the facet capture so it is uh, highlighted i think it is zero and it is eth0 that i that i have used to connect to the same network as the windows 10 machine so now i'm going to just click on this and then this will start uh the packet uh, capture so as we can see it has uh, it start immediately started performing uh, a packet uh, capture so i'll go to the windows uh 10 uh, machine here and then i will try inputting username and password into this uh fields and then try to see whether I will be able to see the password, username and password that were being inputted uh, on this particular machine. So I'll just enter any username. See, let me enter uh, Faisal. And then I'm going to enter password. Let me enter any password. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 0. All right, then I'm going to log in. I'm going to uh, try to log in. Do I don't have any account in this website. We are just only using it for experimental purpose. So it will show us that we don't have account, but the packet is still will still go to the server, try to authenticate. But uh, since we don't have any account within the database, so we are going to we are not the authentication will not be successful. But uh, the packet has been transmitted, and we are going to see it in our Wireshark uh, packet uh, snipper, or we also call it uh, Wireshark protocol analyzer. So I'll say don't save. We don't want to save anything. All right. So as you can see, we have got a response from the server. Sorry, our organized username and password. Have you forgotten your password? So because we don't have any account, we are just only using this for experimental purpose to try to see how a, a block attacker will actually capture username and password that were transmitted over HTTP website. So now we'll go to the we'll go back to the our uh, car Linux attacking machine. And we can stop the packet capture and then see whether we were able to capture the login credentials that were inputted on the particular victim uh, Windows 10 victim uh, machine. So I'm going to stop the packet capture now. And then now uh, we know that when we go back to this uh, machine. All right. So what I was trying to explain is that now we, uh, we want to, since we are the attacker here now, um, we know that we were man in the middle, we are performing man in the middle attack by ARP poison and we are able to snip some packet and we want to know, uh, want to, we are searching for username and password, perhaps the victim has entered username and password. So out of the, all of this uh, packet, a lot of packet that we have captured, how can we find username and password that the victim might have entered through the website he has visited? So now uh, we have going to make use some uh, do some search filter to help us search for a packet that contains some strings. So uh, oh another way also is using the uh, the HTTP uh, method that was used in transmitting that particular packet because when we come here, uh, username and password are usually used uh, transmitted via the HTTP POST method. By HTTP post methods, uh, field uh, data data such as username and password are transmitted by a HTTP post method to the server. Then the server will now authenticate, check its database whether there there exists an account that has that uh, login credentials, username and the password. And if uh, the authentication was successful, then uh, we'll be able to assess our account that we have on that particular database. So the method that was used in transmitting this is the HTTP uh, POST method. So uh, now uh, this we are going to, uh, since we know that this has been, was transmitted using POST method, then and also we can uh, right click on this and then see view fetch source. And when we view fetch source, we are going to see that uh, the username and the password were actually transmitted using HTTP POST method. And then I'm with that, I'm with that knowledge, we'll go back to the Wireshark protocol analyzer and then try to filter based on the HTTP POST method, all the packets that were transmitted using HTTP POST method. And for out of those packets, we'll be able to get in the login credential that this particular website uh, transmitted to the server. All right, so what I'm going to do, I will just uh, click on Control F and then I'm going to find a search for post. 
All right. So I can, see, as you can see, we can we have the form here that was used uh, in entering our username and password, and we can see it is user login form, and the method was used uh, so was was uh, was post method, and we can see edit name where we enter the name and the value we enter was Faisal, which was the username that we entered. So we can see that uh, this uh, actually this form was transmitted to the server via HTTP post method. Now, up with this knowledge now, we can go back to the Kali Linux machine and then go back to the uh, protocol analyzer and then try to find packet that are uh, that were actually transmitted using HTTP post method. So uh, to filter a packet based on HTTP post method, I'll come here under this uh, field uh, display field, apply a display filter, uh, this search bar here, and then I will say uh, HTTP uh that okay i already have the filter because i used it before so i'll just click on this so http that records that method is equivalent to first so i'm looking for all packet that meet this uh criteria and then i'll just hit enter uh, click on this or hit enter and then this will find me all the packet that satisfy that particular criteria now in this only one packet was able to satisfy that particular criteria and so i can click on this all right click on the packet and then select follow tcp stream and then there i'll be able to see the username and the password as you can see here we have name faisal and then pass one two three four five six seven eight nine zero so as we can see we have been able to capture the password that that victim computer transmitted because we were able to stay stay as the man in the middle to capture the packet we capture the packet and we can see the username and the password that the victim computer windows 10 computer entered and this are the username and the password and another way we can also search for username and the password is to make use of a string to search via string and because we know that uh username and password are usually because we are in the login form here when we go to the login form here now the name uh the name of the uh field that was used in entering uh that that was named the text field that was named that was uh uh created for us to enter our username usually is given name name here and the password is given pass is the name is pass as you can see it here pass uh you can see type password and by the name of the text uh a box where we have to enter our password is name as pass while the name where we have to enter our username is name is uh, is given the assigned with the name uh, name with the uh, variable name name so based on this knowledge now we can make use of this to now uh, filter packet based on that criteria try to see if there is any pack packet that contains such a string now if there is any packet that contains such a string then we, that is likely to contain a packet that is likely to contain our uh, the username and the password and to filter packet based on string all we have to do we could just come here under the menu edit and then we uh we we look uh find packet we click on find packet we click on it then we are going to see this uh other option will will come up and then what we are going to search for we are going to search for the under the packet byte that is the part of the packet that actually contain uh the data that we were actually transmitting okay and then we are also searching for string not anything but string so make sure it is packet byte and what we are searching for is string so we can enter either name or pass so let me enter pass because we are enter looking for something that is uh, has uh, a string that contains a string pass and then i'll just click on find now this will return to me all the packet that meet this particular uh, criteria and then I can go and uh, search for those packets and then try to see the packet that actually contains my username and the password that I am looking uh, for so I can go through the packet uh, one after the other and then see the packet uh, that contains that particular uh, criteria so we can see this is one of our packet so I'll just come here right click on it and then follow TCP stream and then click on it and uh, this is the likely packet this is a packet that you we transmitted and it contains our username name faisal and then pass we can see the password one two three four five six seven eight nine zero so this is how we can make use of such filter within our uh, wireshark protocol analyzer to see the username and the password that were actually transmitted through the packet that we sniffed